So in the other video, we built an APRS tracker using the DigiRig Lite, the Pi Zero, and a Baofeng. In this video, we're going to show you how to get all of that to run as soon as the Pi boots. Stick around and we'll get right to it. So there's three things that we want to accomplish with this startup script. First, we want to make sure that the GPS is connected. Second, we want to make sure the sound card is connected. And finally, we want to start Direwolf. Let's go ahead and jump over to the command line. And I'm actually going to teach you exactly what's happening in this script rather than just giving you a script because something in my setup might be just a little bit different in yours. And if you understand what's going on in that script, you can easily tweak it to fit your particular setup. Okay, so let's start with the GPS. The first thing I want to do is I'm going to run C GPS and verify that the GPS does have a lock and it does. The next thing I want to show you guys, let's clear that screen, is the GPS pipe command. So I'm using GPS pipe space hyphen R space hyphen N space five. And what that's going to do is spit out in raw format five GPS sentences and then exit. So if I just press return, you'll notice that it's going to exit pretty rapidly. However, if the GPS is not plugged in, this will hang at this point, and that's going to be helpful for us in our script because that's going to cause our script to hang until the GPS is plugged in. Let me show you guys what I mean. So let's clear that screen. We're going to run the CGPS command again, and you'll see that I have no lock because, well, I don't have a GPS plugged in at the moment. Pressing Q to get out of that and clearing the screen, let's run that GPS pipe command again. And you'll see this time that it just sits there. It's not going to do anything until we plug in the GPS. Now the GPS is plugged in, and you'll see that that script just exited out. So that's the first step that we want to do in our script. So we're going to clear the screen. I'm in my home directory. If you're uncertain, you can run CD and enter just to verify you're in your home directory. And now we're going to say nano space startup. Oh, got to spell it right. Startup.sh to indicate that it is a bash script. First thing we need to do is define our shebang line. So that'll be pound exclamation point forward slash bin forward slash bash. And we're just going to type out that first command right here in our script that we just used a second ago in the terminal. So GPS pipe space hyphen R space hyphen N space five. And that's all we need right there to stop this script until the GPS is plugged in. So at this point, let's press Control S to save that and Control X to get out of it. So now that we know the script will hang until our GPS is plugged in, we're good with that. The next thing we want to do is sort of the same thing, but this time we're going to have to attack this a little bit differently. So let's clear that screen. I'm going to run a record space hyphen L. And if you watch the previous video, uh, you'll know that this is our sound card information. Now, what I'm looking for is something unique in this card three line. I'm going to use USB audio device and I'm just going to copy that because we're going to run the same command again. This time, though, we're going to pipe that through the grip command. So this is the pipe symbol right here. We're going to pipe that through the grep command. We're going to give it opening quotations. I'm going to paste in that USB audio device that I just copied. And keep in mind, guys, right now this is case sensitive. So we've got to make sure the case is right when we type this out. If we press return, you'll see that we get a hit. We get a return on that. Let's do something else here. Uh, we're just going to search this time for CAM4ACK, which isn't going to be in that line. and I want you to see what happens when it's not. You'll see that that returns nothing. So now, armed with that information, we can add to our script so that it will not start until the sound card is plugged in. And the reason this is critical is if you tried to start this uh, at boot and did not have the sound card plugged in, Direwolf is going to crash 
And if you don't have some sort of monitor plugged into it, you would never know it. So that's why it's critical to check for the sound card before we start Direwolf. Now, let's go back into our script. So remember, that was nano startup.sh. So we're going to come down below that GPS pipeline and we're going to create a new variable. So I'm just going to run this or call this variable CK for check. We're going to say equals dollar sign open and closing uh, parentheses. And in between those parentheses, I am going to type in that same command that we used just a minute ago, that A record space hyphen L, type it through grip, looking for USB audio device. Now, we've set that variable. We need to define a while loop. All we're going to do is say while that variable is empty, I want you to do something. This is super simple, nothing to be intimidated by. We'll say while space opening bracket space dash Z, which means if this is empty. And we're going to, in quotation marks, give it our variable. Uh, so I'll put CK right there. You need another space after that closing quotation mark before you give it the square bracket. Then you're going to say semicolon space do. And I'm just going to return down a couple of lines and go ahead and close that while loop with the word done. Now, anything we run between do and done will happen as long as this variable of CK is empty. So the first thing we want to do is I'm actually going to copy this. We will copy that and we will paste it in uh, right here because each time this uh, loop runs, we want it to check again to see if it finds that USB audio device. After it has reset that variable again, we're going to come down to the next line and we're just going to tell it to sleep for one second. Now, all this is going to do is literally check for the sound card again, sleep for a second, and constantly repeat as long as this CK variable is empty, indicated by this dash Z. And that's literally all it is to it. Now I am going to tab these two lines in just to make the code a little bit cleaner. And we'll take out that space that was left. So let's press Control S to save it and Control X to exit out. I'm going to clear that screen and we'll go ahead and test this script. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to unplug the sound card from the Raspberry Pi and then we'll try to run our script and we'll see what happens. To run the script, we will use bash space startup.sh. You'll see that it found our GPS and it's dumped over that and then it hung. Now you might think that it hung on the GPS, but it didn't. It's hung looking for the sound card, which isn't plugged in. Let me go ahead and plug up that sound card and you'll see that this is going to find the sound card and then exit out of the script because we're not telling it to do anything after it finds the sound card. And you can see once it found the sound card, it dumped us back out to the command line, basically exiting the script. So we know that everything is working up to this point. So let's go ahead and clear that screen again. The next command we're going to work with is this one here. And let me uh, try to walk through this. This is a Tmux session. It's going to be a new session. The session name is going to be Direwolf. And this tells Tmux which command to run when it starts this new session. Now, if I go ahead and just run this right now, all it's going to do is return us to the command line. Let's see if Direwolf actually started and is running in the background. If we run tmux space ls, you'll see that we do have a tmux session named Direwolf. Now, to get to that new session, we can actually go in and look at it. We're going to run tmux space a for attach. We're going to run space hyphen t to target a specific session, and we're going to say Direwolf, which is the name of our session. Let's go ahead and press return, 
and you'll see that we are inside the Direwolf session that is currently running. It does have a 3D fix on the GPS, and you can see right here that it has already transmitted out one time my beacon. To get out of this session, if you press Control c it's going to kill Direwolf and exit out of Tmux. However, if you press Control b let go of that, and then press the letter D on your keyboard. So that was Control bravo followed by Delta. That will exit you out of it, but leave it running in the background. You can see right here it says that we detached from the session Direwolf. And if we run that Tmux ls command again, you'll see that Direwolf is still running in the background. Now I'm going to attach to it one more time. This time, instead of using the Control b and D to detach, I'm just going to press Control c You're going to see Direwolf end and it exits with this statement right here telling you that it exited. Now if we run tmux space ls, you'll see that we have no sessions running. So we're going to use this command right here as the last part of our custom script. So I'm just going to copy that and then let's go ahead and go back into our startup script. So we'll use nano space startup.sh. We want to come down to the very bottom because this is the last thing we want to happen. So remember, we're checking for the GPS to make sure it's connected. Then this right here is checking for the sound card to make sure that it's plugged in. If both of those are satisfied, it will then go ahead and start Direwolf with Tmux using this last command here. Once we've got those changes made, let's press Control S to save and Control X to exit out of it. Now we do need to make our new script executable. We can do that with chmod space plus x space startup.sh. If we run the ls command, you'll see that startup.sh is in green, letting us know that it's executable. The last piece of the puzzle that we need is to tell the system to run this script at startup. Uh, first, let's take a look at where we are. So I'm going to run the pwd, which is print working directory command, and that shows us that we're in home and km4ack, which is my call sign right here. On your Raspberry Pi, it very well may be something different because I doubt you're using my call as your username. So you will need to sub your username for mine when we get into crime. So what we're going to do next is use crontab space hyphen e for edit. And it's going to ask us which editor we want to use. Well, I'm going to use nano because it's the easiest. It says so right there on the screen. If this is your first time coming into cron, you're probably going to have a lot of these blue lines. These are simply comments. If you hold your control button on the keyboard and keep pressing K, it will take all of those lines out so that uh, we've got a little bit cleaner of a file to work with. I just came down three or four lines where I'm going to type at reboot and I'm going to give it the path, the full path to our script. So that's where the forward slash home forward slash km4ack or your username is what you will use here forward slash startup.sh. And that's the only thing we need to do to tell the system to run the script at boot. Let's go ahead and press Control S to save it and Control X to get out of it. Now, one other thing I do want to mention before we wrap this up, uh, I'm going to go back into that startup script. If you have some issues with this running at boot, the one thing you might want to do is just put a sleep command right at the very top and tell it to sleep for probably 15 or 20 seconds. Sometimes we need to give the system a, a couple more seconds to boot before everything is going to work correctly. So if you're having some sort of issue and it's not working for you, try that sleep command right at the top and that should solve it. Let's press Control S to save it and Control X to exit. Now I'm going to reboot the Raspberry Pi. We'll be back in just a second to verify that Direwolf is up and running.
Okay, so after the reboot and I've SSH'd back into the Pi, let's just run tmux space ls and you'll see that we have a direwolf session running. That tells me that direwolf is definitely running in the background. If we want to go into that and take a look though, we can run tmux space a space dash t space direwolf. Go ahead and hit return and you can see the direwolf came up successfully on reboot. I'm going to press control bravo followed by the letter d delta to get out of that. That shows me that I am detached from that session. And now you know how to auto start your APRS tracker at boot. If you found today's information helpful, be sure to give us a thumbs up before you head off. We will see you on the next one. Until then, 7-3.